Well, good morning. Everybody settling in? It's good to be in the house of the Lord, isn't it? Amen. It's good to be here, it is, it is. Glad you guys are here with us this morning. Um, I'm sure more people will come, we'll fill in a little bit more, but, but you are here, and I am grateful for that this morning. Um, I hope you're looking forward to a great service. Um, we're going to do. We're, we're going to have a special time of prayer this morning for a little guy that. Um, just be, be having this in the back of your mind. Um, those of you who know Allie Delaney, used to be Allie Doster. She had a little boy two weeks ago, and this little guy is not doing so hot. He's struggling. He's at Riley Hospital, not doing well, and um, we love Allie, and we love Trevor. And we love their family, and Missy and Colt, my grandma and grandpa. And he's got a grandpa's heart just like I do. He loves his grandkids. So we're going to have a special time of prayer at our prayer time this morning. So be thinking about that. Think of how you can lift up, his name is Briggs. Think about how you can lift up Briggs this morning. And Allie, if you're watching, we love you so very much. I don't know if you're watching or not. You're probably watching your church, but I get that. But um, we love you. And those of you in the nursing home, well, thank you for joining us this morning. Glad that you're here. Glad that you're here this morning. I hope you're, I hope you're anticipating an amazing movement of God. Because if when, when we seek Him, He moves, doesn't He? So thank you for being here this morning. God bless you. I pray that we have a phenomenal service. I pray that um, God really moves in your life this morning. Thank you. Cat, stand with us, would you? Call to worship this morning comes from Psalms 147, 1 through 5. Praise the Lord. How good it is to sing praises to our God. How pleasant and lifting to praise him. The Lord builds up Jerusalem. He gathers and exiles of Israel. He heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. He determines the number of stars and he calls them each by name. Great is our Lord and mighty in his power. His understanding has no limit. Let us pray. Lord, thank you so much for bringing us together this morning. And just put your hands on little Briggs and the doctors that are working on him. And be with Allie and Trevor and Missy. And just just continue just to help bring them peace and comfort through this time as you're, as you're healing little Briggs. And Lord, just thank you for bringing us into this place to worship you. Please be with this worship team as we praise you and, and lead this congregation in your praises and be with Pastor Tom as he brings this message. In Jesus' name.
Stand back up. We're going to do something fun this morning. We haven't done this in a long time. Can we just greet each other in the name of the Lord? Go around shaking hands, kissing, kiss up on each other. No, do that. But just say hi to everybody. You want to? Yeah. Just go around and tell everybody hi. Hi, how's it going? <laughs> I did remember. have to get off the platform, buddy. (laughs) 
<laughs> this is awesome. You guys act like you missed each other. Huh? No, you're not dismissed. Hey guys, if we can move back to our seats, that'd be great. You can sit down. No, he's not. No, he's not. I don't think so. I don't think so. Oh, no, I don't. No. Now, wasn't he that great? He came in on Friday afternoon to play a few months, but not... It was great. Uh, right now. All you beautiful people got to say good morning. Good job, Pastor Tom. Good job. Well, I remembered last week I didn't let you do it, so I thought I'd better this week. You did it last week. Well, hey, I got some announcements for you this morning. Did you move? No. Oh, you're there. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, hey, good morning, good morning, good morning. Announcements. Next Sunday is Mother's Day. So bring your mommies. And your grandmas and your grandmas and your aunts and uncles. Not your uncles. I'll bring your uncles if their aunts are coming. <laughs> but come on out. We're going to celebrate Mother's Day. Angie's not here, here right now. She'll be here next week. She had surgery on her knee. But she's got gifts bought for you guys. And, and um, so she's got stuff for you. And we will celebrate you next Sunday. I promise. We miss you, Angie. We miss you, Angie. We love you. Hi. And Billy, we love you too, Billy. We're going to pray for those guys um, at our prayer time. We love you guys, and uh, Mother's Day is next week, May 14th. We're going to the Pickle in Hartford City for dinner out. We haven't done that either in a long time. If you've ever been to the Pickle, it's the bowling alley actually, but they've got great food, great food. So come out and join us there, 6 o'clock. That's anybody. Anybody can come. It's not like kids. You, can, you can't bring your pets, but you can bring your kids unless your kids act like pets. Sometimes kids act like pets. Crawling on the floor, eating food off the ground and stuff. But that's okay. We don't mind. Come on out. Join us for that. It's going to be a great time. Um, May 15th, our next board meeting at 4.30. Take note of that, board members. Um, I want to talk to you about something very important that day. Um, I think it's important that we check into that. So, um, May 21st is, our, 21st is our district assembly. At Anderson First Church, um, the delegates, you know who you are, so you need, we need to go to that, be there for that. Camps are coming up. Yes. Camps are coming up. The video should be coming up. The video should be coming up soon. Not, that, not this week, but maybe two weeks we'll have the video. But, but hey, listen, I will be at both senior high and junior high camp because that's just what I do. Yeah. That's just what I do. <laughs> and I'm in charge of the games I do the games and, and we get muddy and messy and all kinds of fun stuff. So, hey, if you're not signed up for camp yet and you want your kids to go, listen, the church will pay half of your kid's way. The church will pick up 50% of your kid going to camp from this big to this big. If you have a kid that wants to go to camp, <sighs> no, Gary, you know, you're not going to camp. You're, although you're that big, you, you can't go. Your age accountability, you can be a counselor, yeah, you can do that. Oh, there you go. Go watch some kids. I think that's a horrible idea. I just, heard, I just thought about that for a minute. I just thought we just said that. Nick. No, wait a minute. No. No, 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 no. No, 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 no. You're not. No. We're good. <laughs> oh, my goodness. How am I getting myself in this much trouble? Anyways. Um, if you want your kid to go to camp, sign them up. You can go online to sign up. You can talk to Pastor Gloria. She can get you signed up for camp. Let's go to camp this year. Yes. So much fun. Like I said, we'll pick up half, of your, half the cost for your kid to go. Um, and we will get them to and from if you can't. Yes. I'm gonna do that. You're going to do that? How nice. That's, oh, okay. <laughs> 
I know, I'm silly. But you send your kids to camp. It's a good time. It's a good time. Um, no, I think that's all of our announcements. Um, Kat's got an announcement. I do. On the mic, right? Go ahead, help yourself. So I'm going over to the New Hope, New Hope House tomorrow, and I need a couple strong, willing guys or gals, because, you know, we're tough, too. If you guys want to come help me move some furniture, I'd really appreciate it, preferably in the day, so I know that limits some of you. So if you have availability to uh, pop in and help me move a couple couches, because I'm small and mighty, but I'm still limited sometimes. So. And things, items of need still, we still need all the kitchen. Bowls, plates, pots, pans, the whole nine. So, and then um, still some utility totes and women's shorts from size zero to 12. So those are what we're looking for right now and then we're gonna get this thing up and going. That exciting? Yeah. We're gonna be helping a lots and lots and lots of beautiful women that need help and be able to touch their lives. So today also um, at the end of service, we'll be taking up a love offering for New Hope. Um, we'll be doing that this week and probably next week. Pick it up a, a love offering. And anything helps. I mean, if it's a dollar, if it's a we will take it all. We're, we want to get this thing going so, like he said, we can start helping some people online. Facebook Live, you can always give at DunkirkNazarene.org. Drop down for New Hope. Put it in that New Hope donation, and we would greatly appreciate everything and anything. Yes. So, also, your tithes and offerings to the church. We appreciate all the stuff you guys have been doing online. You can go to DunkirkNazarene.org, as she said, and there's a drop-down. There's all kinds of different places you can give on that drop-down. But um, give your tithes and offerings to the church. Give, give, give back. It's important to do that. And um, it's, number one, God commands it in His Word. And number two, you'll be blessed abundantly, more than what you could ever dream or imagine. So this morning we're going to take up our offering, if the ushers have come forward. Also, ushers, if you would this morning, I need you to pass out puzzle pieces. So I need to have a bunch of ushers this morning. T -t Tanner, come on up. Um, yep. Quentin, come on up. Tim, yep. Gary, come on up. You can help us out. Quentin, Gail, come on up, buddy. We need you. Well, you, you would just pass this plate. Come on, Gail. You can be a, you, you can be a puzzler. You can be a puzzler. You guys are going to use those. Children, well, not the kids, just the adults. So let me pray for the offering, and we'll pass these out. Father, we love you, Jesus. Thank you for those that give, and thank you for those that, um, that, that support your ministries, Father God, here at the church. We are beyond blessed, Father God, because of who you are. And the fact that you give us opportunities, Lord, to serve you in different ways. One way is giving back to the church, Father God. So bless those that give. And Father, those that can't, Father God, bless them too. So maybe one day they can. We love you. To your name we pray. Amen. Amen.
right, we're going to our prayer time this morning. And um, I had mentioned earlier about this little guy. Um, that's Briggs. No. Briggs is at Riley Hospital right now in the NICU. He's intubated. Which means he's got a tube down his throat. And um, I've never met this kid, but I love him. I love him. And more than that, Allie is one of our kids. She's one of our kids. Um, I came here, and I think she was 13 years old when I got here. And she is precious to me. Then I met Trevor. And I fell in love with him too. And then his grandpa got, her, his, Briggs' grandpa got saved and, and started coming to church. And, and his, Briggs' grandma has always come to church. And they're here this morning. And I deeply love them. I'm trying to get through this without... without I wear my feelings on my sleeves when I get, I get a little older. I start, you know, it's right, it's right here now. So, um, he's not out of the woods yet, is he? He's not. Um, he has some developmental issues, I think, right? And he's, he's a preemie. And so, Allie, if you're watching, again, we love you and are diligently, urgently praying for little Briggs. And I'm going to ask Grandma and Grandpa to come up here with me this morning. I was going to try to ask, I was going to ask Missy to share a little bit, but I thought, I'm not going to do that to her. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Good, 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 good. No, I mean, we have appreciated your prayers. Okay, you just stand there and hold it because I'll be shaking like this. So, okay. Um, I just wanted to say we appreciate your prayers uh, so much. And Allie and Trevor have been, you know, going through and, uh, okay, thanks. All right. Through something that they've never had to deal with before and can't even imagine what it would be like. But I wanted to share something that she sent this morning, which I thought was just incredible. He's off of the EEG now because he hasn't had any seizures for a complete 24 hours. So God is working, and he's been, been there through all the nurses and the doctors and all the people that are caring for him, and, and the, the, even the lactation person has been amazing and just loving on them and Allie and telling them, you know, she, they feel helpless. You can imagine, we all feel helpless right now, but she is, um, she, this the lactation person has been sent by God because she's like, you're doing the most important thing you can do for your son right now, which is feed him. And so she's still being able to do that. And he's eating more, which is good. But the important thing is here, he's pooping. So all you parents that hate those poopy diapers, be glad they're pooping because that means that there's, everything's working and that the blood, is, you know, the guts are, you know, the, it all works together, the blood flow. And if, if it's not pooping, so we're yes. very grateful for those diapers. Amen. And, um, <laughs> and uh, so I just wanted to thank you all for that. Uh, prayers and, and continue yes, praying for them. He's not out of the woods, but he is getting there. And he's on the lowest setting of the ventilator that he can be on before they take him off. So it's just there to help him if he struggles. He's not having to use it like continually. It's just there to a little break, you know, to breathe in a big air, you know. So just thank you. We love you, Missy Colt. You're precious to us. Very precious. And you're precious in God's eyes. So this morning, I'm going to ask the church to gather around this couple. And we are going to pray. Man, are we going to pray. We're going to lift up little Briggs. We're going to lift up Allie and Trevor. Because you know what, you guys? I believe in the power of prayer, amen? I believe in the power of prayer. He's 13 days old today. And if you know your pastor, you know anything about your pastor, you know that I love babies. And this little, look how cute he is. He is beautiful. 
And I just can't wait to see him in church one day here with us someday. Where we could just love on him. But, but right now, he needs our prayers. So Missy, I hope you don't mind. I'm going to anoint Colt. Grandpa to Grandpa. Um, <sighs> quit and get it here, buddy, <laughs> would you? <sighs> Dear God, we come before you right now, broken for this little boy, but we lift him to you. We lift him to you, Jesus, this morning. May the power of your Holy Spirit just be in that hospital room right now, Father God. Would you touch him, Jesus, with the mighty hand of God, that healing hand. Touch him, Lord. We believe in the power of prayer, Father God. We believe that you love the little children, Jesus. In fact, you said, come unto me. Don't hinder them, for there is those of the kingdom of heaven. So, Father, this morning we are anoint colt in the name of the Father and of the Son and of your precious Holy Spirit on behalf of Briggs. Briggs Doster Delaney. Father, I've never met this little boy, but I love him. I love him. So, Father, would you move? Would you work? Would you heal this little guy? We're asking for a miracle, Father God, even right this very minute. May the hand of heaven reach down and touch this boy. Like only you can. We love you, Jesus. So, Father God, in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we anoint Colt, Father God, on behalf of his grandson, his first grandson. He's got his two little girls, but Father God, there's something special about a grandson to a grandpa. So, Father, would you move? Be with Colt and Missy, Father God, too, as they take care of Allie and Trevor. And be with Allie and Trevor as they take care of Briggs, Father God, this morning. Put your hand on them, Jesus. Put your hand on them, Lord, to make good decisions, powerful decisions that's best for little Briggs. You know, Allie's been faithful so much, Father God, in your service, working with so many teens and loving on teens. But Father God, we're praying for a miracle for her. Just move. We believe you will, Father. We believe you will. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, we pray all these things. And all God's people said, Amen. Amen. You and me both. <laughs> I love you too. So much. You bet. Yes. Well, you know how I feel about that little girl. sing this song. It's called The Stand. And I love this song because it talks about the fact that Jesus never leaves us alone. So if you stand with us this morning, I'd appreciate that.
Father God, for your love to us. We thank you, Father God, for your patience for us. And Father, again, we just want to pray for Allie and Trevor this morning. Just be with them, Father. I don't have to say again how I feel about them, Father. You know I love them so much. And Father, would you move? Father, I pray again this morning also for Susan. She mentioned online needing prayer, Father God, so I pray for her today. Would you just be with her, Jesus? Touch her, Father, whatever her need is. Father, what I, what I have found in my life, Father, is no matter what I go through, you are enough for me. You've never fallen short, Jesus, ever. So, Father, we're thankful for that this morning. Thank you, Father God, for just being who you are. And, Lord, we love you. We love you. Father, we pray for Angie too, Father, Angie Lopez, as she is recovering, Father God, still from the surgery. Um, just be with her. And, and for Billy Myers too, Father, we love Billy. Father, be with her as she continues her re recovery. And Father, would you just continue to work in her life? Be with New Hope Ministries, Father God, New Hope Ministry Center, Father God, as we continue to move forward, Jesus, in, in the call that you've placed on Kat's life. Father, be with that ministry, Father God. Whatever has to happen, Father God, for that, may it be so. We love you, Jesus, so much. We thank you, Jesus, for being who you are and loving us the way that you do. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Kids, can I have you come up so I can pray with you before you guys go back to Children's Church? I'm going to come down there with you guys, and we're going to pray this morning for you. Come on up here, guys. Come on, kiddos. Come on, guys. They're coming. Come on, guys. Father God, we thank you for these students, these kids, Father God, today that you've brought to be in, in, in the house of the Lord, Father God, this morning. And, and Father, I pray as we go back to Children's Church, Lord Jesus, with Gail and with Margaret and, and Cheryl and Kathy, Father God, that they would learn something amazing from you today, Jesus. Father, continue to us to work in their little lives. One day, Father God, that they might be in a pulpit somewhere preaching the gospel. Bless them, Jesus, today. In your name we pray. Amen. You guys are free to go. Thanks, guys. Kind of funny because um, this message that I'm pre going to pre share with you this morning happened three weeks ago before anything ever happened with Briggs. So um, if you're thinking, if you sit there thinking, well, he wrote that just because, no. 
God's timing is perfect. Isn't it? His timing is perfect. Lazarus is one of Jesus' friends. He fell sick and died before Jesus could arrive to restore him. The loss was devastating to Lazarus' sisters, Mary and Martha. It looked like one big mistake. If Jesus would have just been there, if Jesus would have been there, Lazarus would not have died. See, Jesus, what Jesus does, he enters into our pain. He enters into our pain. He doesn't make us walk through it alone. He enters in. And not only did he enter into pain with Martha and Mary, he also wept. If you read in chapter 11, he also wept. The Lazarus had been lying in a tomb for days, four days, lying in a tomb. Jesus performs a miracle and raises him from the dead and is foreshadowing of what would happen to Jesus later on, right? That would happen with Jesus later on. And for that, that's why we put our hope in him. That's why we put our hope in him. That's why we, that, that's why we put our trust in him. Father, admittedly, we don't always understand everything you're doing. However, we want to trust and believe that you have the best intentions for our lives. Expand our faith, Lord, and help us learn to trust you more as we experience the various trials and frustrations of life. Amen. And amen. Lazarus. You each got a piece of puzzle this morning, right? Hopefully you guys still have that. Your piece of puzzle. Because we're going to be using that here in a little bit. Don't let that out of your sight. But I want to read to you out of John chapter 11. It's a lot. It's a lot to take in this morning. So um, I just want to say good morning. We're honored to have you here this morning to worship with us. Whether you're a guest or you've been here, you've been coming to church here, for 60 years. We are glad that you are here meeting with us, joining with us, worshiping with us. And I, my, my prayer for you this morning is that God would move in your hearts in a powerful way. We're continuing our current sermon series called Resurrecting Hope. Life's greatest challenges can only be faced when we have hope in Jesus. The only way we can face the challenges of life, the struggles in life, the battles in life, is if we have hope. Amen? Is if we have hope. If we have hope. And when we have hope, the power of Jesus and His present living with us and through our, our, we have our faith in Him. Last week we discovered that, 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 that were, were, uh, there were others who saw Him as well. And, he restored, he, and His love restored their hope even after they had failed Jesus. Even they had failed Him. He restored them. He restored them. I remember it was back in the year 2000. So 22 years ago. Um, I got a phone call. And it was February 29th. It really was. February 29th, I got a phone call. And on the other end of the line, it said this. Judy's dead. Who's Judy? Probably nobody to you. I mean, if I show you pictures, you wouldn't even recognize her. But she was my sister. She was 35 years old. And um, I was a year older than her. I loved her. She was my friend. And for the longest time, for the longest time, I didn't understand. I couldn't wrap my mind around why would God do this. 
I had been serving him. I had been faithful to him. I moved to Michigan, and I was doing ministry there. And it was probably in the, 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 the peak of our ministry, the greatest times of our ministry. Hundreds and hundreds of students ministering to hundreds of students every week, sharing the gospel, watching kids go into ministry, doing all kinds of different weird things, wonderful things for God. And I get that phone call. Judy died. Judy was heavy. Judy was a big girl. Had a, a large, enlarged heart. And one, day, one night she just went to bed and fell asleep and never woke up. I loved her. And I still miss her today. And even my own family wonders why. Why did this happen? My sister... My sister tries to figure out, it was her only other sister. I only had two, Michelle and Judy. Michelle's still with us, but Judy's gone. Why? God, if you'd have just been there. How many times did I say that? God, if you'd have just been there. Why did this happen? But God gave me this comfort. God gave me this peace. God gave me this hope that I do not have to grieve by myself. He loved me enough to weep with me. He loved me enough to be right there with me. See, the gospel are full of stories of Jesus' interaction with people that shine a light on His love and compassion. One of the most powerful resurrection moments actually takes place before his own. The encounter with Jesus that we see him when he meets people in the midst of their grief and sorrow. We're going to, we're going to read 1 through 7 this morning, right now. The man named Lazarus was sick. He was from Bethany in the village of Mary and his sister Martha. This Mary was the brother of Lazarus who now lay sick, was the same one who poured perfume on the Lord and wiped his feet with her hair. So the sisters sent word to Jesus, Lord, one of your loved ones is sick. When he heard this, Jesus said, th he said this, this sickness will not end in death. This sickness will not end in death. And in my Bible, on my phone here, it's written in red letters. No, it is for God's glory so that God's Son may be glorified through it. Now Jesus loved Martha and her, sister, and her sister and Lazarus. So when he heard that Lazarus was sick, he stayed, home. he stayed where he was for two more days. And then he said to his disciples, let's go back to Judah. But Rabbi, they said, a short while ago, there was a Jew that, that, that there was a Jews there and tried to stone you. And you, you want to go back? And Jesus answered, aren't there 12 hours of daylight? Anyone who walks in daytime will not stumble, for they see by the world's light. We're introduced to a family here in chapter 11, right? Martha, Mary, and Lazarus. We're introduced to this family. The family's heartbroken to find that their brother Lazarus is gravely ill. He's sick. Not just a little sick, but he's real sick. Real sick. So they send word to Jesus, because they know who Jesus is. They've experienced Jesus. Mary was the same one that, that, that poured oil on his, on his feet and wiped her, his feet with her hair. This is the same Mary. They know who he is. And they know what he can do. They know what he can do. She so said, hey, you know what? This is going to be okay. Everybody just calm down. We'll just get Jesus. He'll be here in a few minutes. He'll take care of all this. Jesus tells his disciples, Wait. Not going to end in death. And Lazarus is described as the person that Jesus loved. The sisters sent word to Jesus to come quickly because they had hoped that he would heal his their brother. Surprisingly, when Jesus gets words of Lazarus' state, he decides to remain where he is for two more days rather than come as to his aid. Why? Why not come as soon as you receive the call for help? Why wouldn't you just go? 
And Jesus answered this question in the text. Jesus says, delay will somehow give glory to God in the end. You see, here's the thing. Here's the thing about Jesus. Oh, let's go through all this stuff. Jesus sees the bigger picture. Jesus sees the bigger picture. See, we, we, we can only see here. Right? We, 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 we live our lives with, with spiritual blinders. We, we can't see the big picture. We can't see all that God is doing. We can't see all the things that, that, that God is doing and how He's moving. Every one of us can recall a time we found ourselves in, in where we needed Jesus to show up. We needed Him. Maybe it was a diagnosis of sickness. Maybe we needed healing from Him. Maybe it was a broken relationship that could be restored by Jesus. Maybe it was a dream that we had for our family, our careers, our marriage was no longer a reality without His help. Like Mary and Martha, sometimes we find ourselves in need of God to show up. We need Him to show up. But it seems like He's not there. It seems like He's absent. He's missing from the big picture. It seems that way. It seems that way. Where are you, God? Where are you? Where are you when my three-year-old grandson has leukemia? Where are you? Where are you when my 35-year-old sister is dying in her bed? Where are you when my 42-year-old brother is dying because from infection in his leg and he passes away? God, where are you? Where are you? The truth is, our timing is often not God's timing. In the story, it seems that Jesus, in all of his knowing wisdom, is strategic in his response. He sees a way to make the kingdom different, a kingdom difference by staying where he is for two more days. I believe in power of prayer. We pray. Jesus does answer. Jesus always answers. Did you know that? He never doesn't answer your prayers. Sometimes he says yes. Sometimes he says no. And sometimes he says, just hold on. Just hold on. I gave Allie the word that God gave me when Tommy got sick. And it's simply just this, Psalms 46.10, just be still and know that I am God. Just be still and know that I am God. So I sent that to Allie. I gave it to her. I gave her my word. Of course, it's God's word. It's not really mine, but I shared that with her. I think it was yesterday I shared that with her. Sometimes yes, and sometimes no. And sometimes it's just not yet. It's just not yet. You got your puzzle pieces out, right? Get them, get them out real, real quick. Sometimes I think, sometimes I think living for Jesus and following Him is like a puzzle. It's like a puzzle. Try to put together a puzzle without the box cover, right? When Sheila puts together a puzzle, I don't do puzzles because I don't have the patience to do puzzles. Sheila gets them all spread out on the table and she's got the, the corners, all the things all ready to go and She's got the edges all, and like, nope. Nope. Not going to happen. Nope. Any puzzle doers in here? Anybody? Oh, you, most of you are my people. <laughs> most of you are my people. Thank you, Jesus, for my people. I do not have the patience for puzzles. But I think sometimes our life is like that. She'll have, the, she'll, she'll have the box on the table, and she's looking at the box cover, and she's, she's putting everything together. And if Kathy Trimble was here, oh, she'd be up here doing this puzzle right now, as a matter of fact. She'd be taking pieces out of my hand. Yeah, so sometimes life is like that, isn't it? Sometimes it's like we don't even have the picture, and we're trying to put it together. Where does this piece go? Where does that piece go? If you had the box, you could see. Right? But living by faith, living by faith, living by hope, 
is not having the box in front of you. It's just trusting that God is going to do what God does. And he's going to be who he is. And eventually your puzzle will come together. Mine probably never will because I can't stand doing puzzles. I have seen puzzles that Sheila lays out with so many pieces and with such similar coloration and images that would be impossible to sit down and place the pieces in the correct place in order to finish any kind of large puzzle you have to have the cover to guide you and each one of our lives is like a single piece of, massive, of a massive puzzle our life fits somewhere right our life fits somewhere in the overall story God is telling in the world. But we're limited in our abilities to see the larger picture. So when trials come and, and difficulties arise, it can be heartbreaking because we simply cannot see how all this fits together. We don't understand what this looks like. Why is this happening? And we don't understand the circumstances or, or what's, what's going on. We have no idea. And we struggle we struggle with our piece of the puzzle. How does it fit? How many times have you ever asked the question, God, how does this work? How does this make sense in my life? How does any of this make sense? And why you're doing it in my life? Where does this piece of the puzzle go, Lord? Where does it go? Heartbroken. We simply cannot see how it all fits. It makes it, it makes, how it makes this beautiful picture in the end. At the moment, it just looks like a broken piece of puzzle, doesn't it? And what this puzzle is, it's a pizza. Can you see? In the piece of the puzzle that you have in your hand, can you see a pizza in that? I'm looking at it right now going, hey, I have no idea where this piece goes. And it's even an edge. You see what I'm saying? Where does this piece go? Some of my family members, like my sister Michelle, still don't understand why my sister was taken. She doesn't understand why that happened. However, I have found peace in the fact that God will use my sister's death to bring him glory. See, when Jesus finally arrives, when he finally arrives at the tomb, when he finally gets there, when he finally gets there, Lazarus has already been buried, dead for four days, and Mary and Martha are distraught over their brother's passing. The truth is that our timing is often not God's timing. The truth of the matter is that our timing is often not God's timing. It's not God's timing. After, I'm going to read 11 through 30, I'm sorry, 17 through 32 This right now. It says this. On his arrival, rats. My phone just did something weird. Get this working right. There we go. It says, let me go back up here. On his arrival, Jesus found that Lazarus had already been in the, in the tomb for four days. Now, Bethany, get this, was less than two miles away. Where Jesus was, was less than two miles away from where Lazarus was. He could have been there in 30 minutes. And many Jews come to Martha and Mary to comfort them in their loss of their brother. When Martha heard that Jesus was coming, she went out to meet him. But Mary stayed home. Lord, Martha said, he was, she runs up to Jesus, Lord, if you had just been here, if you, could have just, if you would have just been here, Lord, this would not have happened. If you would have just been here, But I know 
Even now, God will give you what you ask. And Jesus says to her, and I love, I, I love Jesus. He's so awesome. He says, don't fret it. Your brother will live again. Your brother will live again. And Martha answered, I know. He will rise in the resurrection of the last day. And Jesus says this. This is one of my favorite verses in the Bible. I am the resurrection and the life. The one who believes in me will live even though they die, and whoever lives by believing in me will never die. And he asks her, Do you believe this? Yes, Lord, she replied. I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, who has come into the world. And after she said this, she went back and called her sister Mary aside. The teacher's here. She said, and is asking for you. And when Mary heard this, she got up quickly and went to him. Now Jesus had not yet entered the village, but he was still at the place where Martha had met him. When the Jews had been with Mary in the house comforting her, noticed how quickly she got up and went out and followed her. They thought that she was going back to the tomb to mourn. They thought she was running back to the tomb to mourn, so they went with her. Because what, 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 back in those days, you had actual mourners that would come in and mourn with you. I don't know if I would ever want to be like a professional mourner. What do you do for a living? Well, I mourn people. Excuse me, What? I don't think I'd be good at that. Being a professional mourner, I don't think I'd be good at that. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who had come along with her were also weeping, it says this in the scripture. Oh, get this. And this is why your tears in Jesus' eyes are so important. When he saw them weeping, when they saw him, he saw them weeping. He was moved in his spirit and, and it was troubled. They said, where have you laid him? Come and see, Lord, they replied. And then Jesus wept. Jesus wept. You think you weep alone. You think within, within your tears... You think within your tears that, that, that Jesus doesn't understand. You think within your brokenness that God don't grasp that brokenness. But when you weep, He weeps. When you mourn, He mourns. When you cry, He cries. When you cry, He cries. Then Jesus says, see how He, says, see how he loved Him. But some of them said, Could not he who opened the eyes of the blind man have kept this man from dying? See, Mary had, Mary had gathered, again, the support of the family, the mourners, Lazarus passing, and, and Mary met Jesus as he arrived. But Mary in her grief remained in the house. And again, she says, If you would have only been here, Again, if you talk about our lives, it's like a single massive puzzle, isn't it? She says, if you'd only been here. Jesus is not afraid of your feelings. He's not afraid of your feelings. He wasn't mad at me when I was yelling at him about my grandson. He didn't go, well, you can't do that. I'm Jesus. He understands your brokenness. He understands your hurt. He gets it. Not only does he get it, he feels it too. He feels it too. I'm not ashamed to admit to you guys this morning that when I found out about Allie's little boy, I wept. My heart was broken. And I'm sure some of you had the same response when you found out too. Right? And Jesus felt those tears. He feels your tears. He knows what they mean. In the midst of your brokenness. He's not afraid of your feelings. See, Martha and Mary are actually angry. They're confused. 
They're in anguish. They once hoped that Jesus would come and turn things around, but now they lost all hope. What I love about the story is that Jesus never reprimands the sisters. He never says one thing to the sisters about being upset. Never does. He gets it. He understands your pain. He gets it. He doesn't get frustrated. He's not offended. He's not afraid of their emotions. He's not afraid of their feelings. He's not afraid of those. Here's the thing, gang. Don't be afraid to speak to Jesus honestly about your feelings, about your brokenness. Allow yourself to be vulnerable before Him. He has thick skin. Jesus knows what it's like to suffer. In fact, Max Lucado Max once said this, Permit yourself tears. God understands. Permit yourself tears. God understands. We begin to live with this kind of honesty, I believe it's when we begin to experience the resurrection hope. When we begin to live like this, with this kind of honesty, with this kind of transparency, I believe this is when we start living in that resurrection hope. The hope that God gives us. When we're honest with Him, when we're, when we're transparent with Him, when we're real with Him. We discover that the loss we've experienced is not the end of the story. The loss that we've experienced is not the end of the story. The Bible tells us that God will use everything in our lives, the good, the bad, and the ugly, for, the, for His glory, for our ultimate good. So talk to God about how you feel. Let Him have it. He can take it. He can take it. I remember one day driving over to the church. It's right after Tommy got diagnosed. It wasn't long after that. And I, oh man, I was just really letting God have it. <laughs> Are you ashamed of your pastor because I did that? I was giving it to him. And now we're having a conversation. And all of a sudden... I just felt a peace come over me. Like a warm hug. And I remember just sitting in my truck, and I got to the church sitting in my truck, just kind of basking that in that, and that embrace. I was like, I just yelled at you, Lord. I just, I, I did not treat you well. I just felt his hug. I love you. I love you. In fact, what do you think you'll find is that your tears flow and your heart breaks. You're going to find that you're not alone. Don't you sometimes feel like you walk through these things by yourself? You walk through your struggles, through your hard times, through your bad times, and you're like, God, where are you? Just read the poem Footprints. It was then that I carried you, he says. It was then I carried you. I'm going to wrap up some of this stuff here this morning because Jesus once, once more deeply moved, came to the tomb, and it was a cave with a stone laid across the entrance. And Jesus being Jesus says, take away the stone. Take away this stone. But Lord, said Martha, by, the, by, by, by this time, there's going to be a bad odor. For he's been there for four days. And Jesus said, did, you not, did I not tell you that if you believe, you'll see the glory of God? So he took away the stone and then Jesus looked up and said, Father, I thank you that you have heard me. I know that you always hear me. But I said this for the benefit of the people standing here, that they may believe that you sent me. When he had said this, Jesus called in a loud voice, Lazarus, come out! Didn't mean to yell. 
The dead man came out. His hands and feet were wrapped with strips of linen and clothes around his face. And Jesus said, <laughs> Take off the, clo the grave clothes and let's go. Let him go. Take off the grave clothes and let him go. Jesus touched the core by the witnesses, by the witnesses that profoundly grieved around him. Again, he asks, where has he been buried? Then in verse 35, we read a short verse in the scripture that the Bible simply says that Jesus wept. He cried. Though Jesus in his divinity knew that he was going to resurrect Lazarus, but in his humanity, he had tears. In his humanity, he was weeping. Someone needs to hear this this morning. Someone needs to hear this this morning. When you weep, he weeps as well. When you hurt, he hurts. You hearing me, church? When your heart breaks, his heart breaks. The scripture tells us in this beautiful poetry of, of Psalms that God is close to the brokenhearted and he binds up all their wounds. He's close to the brokenhearted and he binds up all their wounds. We live in a world of sickness. There's a reality. Disappointment is all too common and relationships can be painful. We have a God who is not somewhere far off aloof. We have a God who enters into our pain and he brings us hope. He enters into our pain and He brings us healing. He enters into our struggles and He loves us through them. Martha is instantly concerned because Lazarus had been dead for four days and there's no way that it's going to smell good when they open that thing up. He says, do it anyways. Because instead of His response is comfort. His response is comfort. Jesus brings dead things to life. Jesus brings dead things to life. I love spring. Spring is probably one of my five favorite times of the year. Everything that had been dead all winter long starts growing and sprouting. My grass is green. The trees have blooms. All those things that Gail gave Sheila are continuing to grow everywhere. And eventually they'll, they'll, eventually they'll have these beautiful yellow flowers on them. And they're magnificent. He brings dead, dead things to life, doesn't he? Our whole life is full of springtime. He brings dead things to life. Jesus prays to God. He tells Lazarus to come out of the tomb. Miraculously, Lazarus is resurrected from the dead. He comes out still wrapped in clothes and everyone is amazed. And Jesus seems to believe that those who witness this miracle would be transformed by their experience and God would receive all of the glory. Jesus brings dead things to life. Think about your life today. Think about the dead things in your own life. Maybe you're in a dead relationship. Maybe, you're, maybe some, some stuff is just going wrong, going south, and you feel like, this, like there's no hope. There is hope in Jesus. There is hope in the person in the man of Jesus. He loves you. This kind of story seems to be the theme of Jesus' life and ministry. He comes to bring new life to everything and to everyone. In this story, in this story, Jesus brings a dead man back to life. In our lives, Jesus can bring resurrection to the places that we feel dead to us. The joy we used to have is now dead and Jesus can bring it back to life. The dreams we once had of our future are now dead, but Jesus can bring them back to life. Resurrected relationships, resurrected purpose, resurrected hope. Jesus, Jesus can do anything that God might receive the glory. So this morning, I want to invite you to see maybe for the first time that though your heart may be hurting, and may you be your struggling, try to figure out all this stuff that God is doing. You are not alone. 
you're not walking through life alone, through your struggles alone. Be still and know that I'm God. Be still and know that you still have a purpose and I still have a plan for your life. Be still and know you are not alone. Jesus weeps with you. Jesus weeps with you. So I'm going to ask the worship team to come back up, if they would. And your puzzle piece. Your puzzle piece this morning. I want you to do something with this this morning. I want you to put your brokenness, your hurt, and all those things on that puzzle piece. And as we sing this last song, if you would, would you just walk them up, walk them up to the altar? You don't have to stay. You could just lay it down and go back to your seat. Stand with me this morning, would you? As we sing this last song, get your puzzle piece out. And that place where you're broken, that place where you're hurting, where you're struggling, where you just, where you just need God to move. <clears throat> just lay this puzzle piece down on the altar this morning. Again, you don't have to stay at the altar. You can go back to your seat. But it represents something in your life. You come this morning. Lay it down. I'll be, I'm, I'm going to be the first one. Because I know what mine is. I'll be first. Grab mine. Mine's over there. On the oh yeah. Just lay it down, guys.
have the plate back here in the back. You can just drop it in there. Thank you guys for being here tonight. We love this morning. We love you. I pray that the Lord will just move in your life in a powerful way. Father God, we love you, Jesus. Thank you, Father God, for the story of Lazarus and the brokenness of Mary and Martha and Father, all the things that they've been, they went through. May you, Father God, bless each one of us, Father God, as we do with our own brokenness. Father, as we leave this place, we laid our puzzle pieces down. Maybe we could just leave them, just leave them there. Just leave them as a reminder, Father, that we can turn our backs on our, on our pain, our struggles. We can just follow you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. Thank you, Father God, for loving us. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Also, May 7th, next Saturday, 1 o'clock, bowling tournament, Roland Lanes, Portland, Indiana, for New Hope. Hope to see everybody.